family. I offer my deepest, most heartfelt prayers for your comfort and your strength in such a difficult time. I'd also like to offer my gratitude for allowing me here to offer a few words of reflection. Smart, beautiful, compassionate, loving, dedicated, fierce. Those are words that I'm not sure there are enough. As I began to reflect on Jeanette's life and what she meant to me and to so many others, I had a hard time finding all the right words. Words, words fail. Words fail to truly capture all that Jeanette was and is to so many of us. She was inscrutable. She was undefinable. As a professor and a preacher, you would think words would come easy to me, but words fail. I first met Jeanette when she came to work at Western Theological Seminary. I had already been working there for, I think, about two years when Jeanette came. And Jeanette came in like a whirlwind. She brought style, she brought joy, she brought grace, she brought a uniquely spirited personality. I was struck by how such an amazing powerhouse of a woman could be contained in such a small frame. <laughs> Up until the time that Jeanette got there, I sincerely thought I was the best dressed person at Western. <laughs> until Jeanette got there, and I gratefully gave up that title, because there's no way I could wear high heels the way she could. <laughs> we hit it off immediately, in part because back then there weren't many people of color working at Western. I could probably count on half of one hand. <laughs> Things have certainly changed in that regard. And Jeanette was actually a part of that. We also hit it off because she was so outgoing and friendly that you could not help but be drawn to her. She had such a warm smile and a kind heart. She was always helpful and supportive I've been trying to think of all the ways to describe what I encountered in her in those first few months of getting to know her, what might be the best words, but words fail. I remember at some point during her time at WTS, the admissions and student services office was reconfigured and she ended up in an office and they opened up the doorway of that office to the hallway, so she didn't have the kind of privacy that she had before. I don't think it was any secret that Jeanette did not particularly care for that arrangement. <laughs> but she handled it with grace. I have to admit that I appreciated having her door open up to the hallway, because it meant that I would see her as I passed by. I also liked it because she would always have a smile and a warm greeting, and every now and then she would ask me to come in, we would sit down and talk. And the other thing about her office is that she would always let me take a shortcut to get to see Dave's office. <laughs> she was a conduit, she was a bridge builder. She connected people, she brought people together. Bridge builder, connector. <coughs> These are words, but words fail. 
One of the most significant ways I interacted with Jeanette is when she became part of the diversity planning committee for the strategic planning process, which ultimately led to some pretty significant changes in the diversity and inclusion at Western. She was a part of that. She also joined as a permanent part of the diversity committee itself. In her role on these committees, she contributed to conversations, to training, and affected the outcomes that ultimately transformed the seminary. But it also transformed her. To say that she blossomed during that time would be an understatement. She roared. She became a fierce and tireless advocate for people who were oppressed, for people who were marginalized. She was passionate about diversity. She was passionate about justice. She was passionate about making a difference. She joined in marches, joined organizations. She even ran for public office. She was fierce. Determined. These are words, but words fail. Jeanette, like many of us, had challenges in life. Some were known publicly, others were only known to a few close friends. And in the midst of the pressures and challenges and disappointments and struggles, her smile never wavered. She was always there. Her heart remained open. That's the image I keep with me. Just like that open door in the hallway that I would pass every day. I guess we are certainly left searching for the words. Words that make sense, words that might shed light on the situation, words that might help us understand, but for me, words fail. But like so many others, I loved Jeanette, as did many of us. And unlike words, love never fails. Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Jeanette loved her family. She loved her friends. She loved her community. She loved God. And she loved all those whom Jesus called the least of these. I think it's appropriate that we honor her by continuing that love and continuing the work that Jeanette started. Jeanette, we miss you and we love you.